tea time. It's tea time and we're sitting at the table and my dad wants milk in his tea. Oh, uh, could you get me the milk? I get the milk. I sit down again. Then he wants butter for his bread. Oh, um, could you get me the butter, he says. I get the butter and I sit down again. Then he wants a teaspoon for his tea. Oh, uh, could you get me a teaspoon, he says. And then my mum says, once you get that bum of yours stuck in a chair, you never get it off again, do you? And my dad says, I can't get a moment's peace round here. Presents. I gave my mum and dad all kinds of Christmas presents. I used to go round the shops for hours looking at razors, key rings, clothes brushes, bath salts, chocolate gingers. Once I thought I'd made a breakthrough. I was at Salmon's the Ironmongers and there they were. Two jug things. They were both made of glass, except for the tops. One was a milk jug and it had a bright green plastic top and there was a little lever on it. And when you pulled the lever, a little door slid open and you poured your milk out through the little door. The other jug was for sugar. This one had a bright green plastic top as well, but this one was a kind of funnel so you could pour the sugar out, but it wasn't any kind of funnel. It was special. It had a little gadget inside the funnel. So you only poured out one teaspoonful at a time. Magic. So I bought these wonderful things and I gave them to my mum and dad for Christmas. They said they were very nice. They were very pleased. And for a week or so after Christmas, they were always on the table. If anyone wanted any milk or sugar, I'd say, can I do it for you? Do you want milk in your tea? Let me do it. And I rushed to pick up the jug, pull back the lever, and the milk poured out of the trap door. Sugar? And I picked up the sugar jug, tipped it up to pour out the magic one teaspoonful. Another, another spoonful, anyone? And I poured out the second one. Anyone else? I became the milk and sugar king. I had to be the milk and sugar driver. All week I was pouring for everyone. Breakfast, dinner, tea. After a week or two, I noticed that the milk bottle was getting back onto the table. No jug. I noticed the sugar bowl and the boring old spoon were getting back onto the table. No sugar jug. You see, Someone had to fill those two jugs. So I said, I'll do it. I'll get the new jug. Hey, yeah, I'll get the sugar thing if you want. Okay, yeah. So I poured the milk and the sugar into the jugs and put them onto the table. The only trouble was they'd got their milk and sugar by then. They didn't need me to drive their milk and sugar for them. My reign as the milk and sugar king was over. I was beaten by the bottle and the bowl. My bright green plastic topped jugs went up on top of the kitchen cupboard with the jam jars without lids. We left them there when we moved from that house. They're probably still there. Fridge. Once I went to the fridge, saw our jug in there and I thought, what's in it? A syrup. What syrup? Smell it. Mmm, smells nice. Finger in, lick it. Tastes nice. Lift the jug and drink a bit. Oh, this is good. This is peach syrup, tinned peach syrup. What a drink. So I drank the lot. Not long after, a few days later, I went to the fridge, saw our jug in there. What's in it? A syrup. What syrup? Smell it. Mmm. Oh, yes, this is peach syrup again. Lift the jug and drink and drink some more and drink some more. Drink the lot. Not long after, a few days later, I went to the fridge, saw our jug in there. What's in it? A syrup. Yes, here we go again. Lift the jug and fill my mouth with that thick, sweet juice. <coughs> this isn't peach, this is <coughs> My mouth is full of oil, thick cooking oil. I wonder who put that there? George. George said, sometimes my dad doesn't shave and his face is all prickly. The new teacher said, what does your mother say about that? And George didn't say anything. Claire said, his mum don't live with his dad. And the teacher said, don't say don't, say doesn't. And Claire said, I live with my auntie. Me and my brother. 
Me and my brother, we sit up in bed doing my dad's sayings. I go to bed first and I'm just dozing off and I hear a funny voice going, never let me see you doing that again. And it's my brother poking his finger out just like my dad going, never let me see you doing that again. And so I join in and we're both going, never let me see you doing that again. So what happens next time I get into trouble and my dad is telling me off and he's going, never let me see you doing that again. So I'm looking up at my dad and I'm going, sorry, dad, yeah, sorry. And I suddenly catch sight of my brother's big face poking out from behind my dad. And while my dad is poking me with his finger in time with the words, never let me see you doing that again, just where I can see him. And my brother is saying the words as well with his mouth without making a sound. So I start laughing. And so my dad says, and it's no laughing matter. Of course, my brother knows that one as well. And he's going with his mouth and it's no laughing matter. But my dad's not stupid. He knows something's going on. So he looks around and there's my brother with his finger poking out just like my dad. And I'm standing there laughing. Oh, no. And that's when we get into really big trouble. OK, we've got the next. Spots in my eyes. I've got spots in my eyes. Not spots you can see, they're on my side. I see them when I'm looking at you. To start with, I thought it was dirty windows. Then I thought it was little flies in the air, but it isn't, it's spots in the eyes. I'm trying to find out where the spots are in my eyes. If you see me staring at a white wall, trying to make one eye look at the other eye, that's what I'm doing, looking for the spots in my eyes. Actually. I don't know what an eye is. Maybe it's a plastic ball or it's a kind of little round fish tank, glass outside, water inside, and the spots are floating around in the fish tank of my eye. I wish I could get rid of them. When people look up at the sky and say, look at that, <laughs> not a cloud in sight, I look up too. And there's all that blue sky and there, Floating across that blue are the spots. Shram and Sheddle. There's an old shop in Islington called Shram and Sheddle. Today it's a shop that sells preposterous presents. I imagine that a long time ago it was a tailor's shop and it went like this. Mr. Shram was the boss. Mr. Sheddle sat at the sewing machine with his foot on the pedal, sewing away. Sometimes Mr. Shram thought Mr. Sheddle wasn't working hard enough, so he shouted, Pedal, Sheddle! And Sheddle snarled back, Scram, Shram! And so it went on, day after day. Pedal, Sheddle, Scram, Shram. Pedal, Sheddle, Scram, Shram. Pedal, Sheddle, Scram, Shram. Useless information. I read in a book that giraffes have no voices. The Red Sea is blue. Gorillas can't swim. Black treacle is brown. Elephants can't jump. And nothing rhymes with orange, does it? Tidy your room. They say, tidy your room. But I'm trying to kill a fly on the wall with a rolled up comic. Pew! They say, I'm asking you to tidy your room, but I'm trying to kill the fly by squashing it with a chunk of plasticine. <laughs> They say, I'm now telling you to tidy your room and I'm rolling up little bits of plasticine. For the last time, tidy your room. But I'm making a line of the rolled up bits of plasticine along the edge of the chair. They say, can you hear me? I say, yeah. I'm now flicking the bits of plasticine at the fly on the wall. They say, what have we just asked you to do? And I say, I don't know. My dad. My dad says, after the war was over, everyone came home to sort things out. There weren't going to be any more wars. There weren't going to be any more poor people. There weren't going to be any more bad houses. 
there weren't going to be any more people out of work. That was 40 years ago. Now they're trying to invent spaceships that drop bombs. Now, it would be great if you subscribed. That is, you become a subscriber. Look out for the subscribe button. That way, you see when I put up new vids. What happens, you see, is that I make new vids every few months, and then I post them up one a week for a while. So if you subscribe, you get to see the new ones just as they come hot off the press. Eww.